Hey everybody, and welcome to another edition of Comedia Gogo's podcast, Public Access. I am Jess, and this is a special mini video edition of my segment that I like to call, Yeah, I'm gonna look into that! It's a segment where I talk about the latest in movies and video games and snacks and all kinds of junk that I like, and hopefully the enthusiastic reaction of friends, listeners, and watchers after I tell them about it is gonna be, Yeah, I'm gonna look into that! So, um, first off... Uh, maybe you've heard, maybe you haven't, I'm not sure, but, um, number 21, Tim Duncan, San Antonio Spurs, he retired, he's done, um, he announced it months ago, but maybe you heard, I don't know, maybe you're out of the loop, uh, but fret not, he left behind a legacy of deliciousness in the form of limited edition Slam Dunkin'O's. Only at H-E-B, our Texas grocery store chain, uh, for those of you outside of uh, Texas, Slam Dunkin'O's. Uh, it is out now. I got a box. Uh, what is Slam Dunkin'O's? What is it? What's in it? Um, think multigrain Cheerios, a little bit sweet, and uh, Cocoa Puffs thrown in the mix, just very lightly sweetened. 130 calories a cup, so it's good for you. It's got all kinds of, um, I don't know, fiber um, iron, potassium, all kinds of like, it's like Gatorade cereal. I'm not sure, but, um, I had a bowl. It was delicious. Uh, so, um, you know what? Thanks, Tim. Thanks for everything you've done. And, you know, limited edition slam Dunkin'O's go grab a box. And for all you Spurs fan outside of Texas, sorry. So the other big thing that happened last week was PAX South, and that's the gaming convention, Penny Arcade Expo, that came down here for the third time at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center in San Antonio, Texas, and it was awesome. So uh, this is a gaming convention where thousands of gamers come and show their love for the game, uh, and all kinds of games. I'm talking video games, and PC games, and console games, and card games, and anime games, and tabletop games, and tournament games, and brain games. Games and psychological warfare games and the game with Michael Douglas and Sean Penn and the game, the, the rapper, you know, how we do. Unfortunately, I only had the Saturday pass, so I wasn't able to go Friday and Sunday, but uh, Friday uh, kicked it off awesome with the uh, expo floor and all that good stuff. But at night, uh, they had uh, a bunch of video game uh, cover bands, uh, particularly uh, the Descendants of uh, Erdrick. Uh, they're wonderful. They're awesome. You should look it up. And uh, my personal favorite, Super Mess Mariachi Entertainment System. Uh, we had David uh, from the group on our podcast a while back, and uh, we told you all about it. You should really go check it out. So I played a bunch of stuff, and a lot of stuff was great. Uh, but things that stuck out to me in particular, uh, first off, there was a game called Double Kick Heroes, and it was a metal rhythm game and uh maybe you don't know this about me but i love rhythm games i love like your rock band guitar hero uh rhythm heaven you know space channel 5 and parappa the rapper and all those kind of games if you uh tap a button and sing it with sequence with music uh, i'm just super stoked and i'm uh happy to try it out so this game double kick heroes was uh metal music uh, inspired uh, rhythm game and the whole premise uh, is that the the characters of the game were like a rock band on top of this convertible car very much like a like Queens of the Stone Age or the rock band intro and it's driving along playing metal music and they're being chased uh, by a horde of zombies and werewolves and fucking metal train and it's just uh, and it's all uh, pixel art a very creative, very fun, Double Kick Heroes. It's amazing, I thought that was a really cool one. So another game I liked uh, was uh, called Death Squared, and it was this cool uh, co-op uh, game where uh, each of your players controlled this robot cube, uh, and they were colored. Uh, it was like red, yellow, blue, uh, and green. And uh, so it's four players, and what you have to do is work together to get out of a room uh, which was like layered with traps and uh, the room is scattered with buttons and switches that are color coded. So, you know, yellow can only activate the yellow uh, buttons and so on and so forth. So um, you have to kind of talk to each other uh, to kind of, you know, command each other, make sure you're all on the same page. Uh, the further you go along, the trickier it gets because the buttons might activate a trap that might kill one of your uh, buddies and you got to start the whole thing over. So the whole thing is working in sync with each other uh, to solve each puzzle. And of course, you know, the more you do it, uh, the further you get, the harder the puzzles get and the more reliable uh 
you know, the more you have to rely on your team uh, to get it done. And that's something I totally love. I love uh, couch co-op. I love just having buddies over and uh, getting down on some games. And this game totally encourages it. So I was all about it. So that's Death Squared. Uh, that was awesome. Uh, there was this game called Sundered, which I thought was really cool. Uh, it was essentially like your Metroid Castlevania type of game. Uh, but the whole game was uh, hand-drawn art. Uh, like a really dark Dragon's Lair, like a dark Don Bluth kind of artwork. And uh, the gameplay was great, hack and slash, but with just like, exploring rooms and the demo was excellent. It ended on a on a cliffhanger where this giant skull boss came in and uh, it was totally hype. I just thought it was awesome. Uh, Sundered. Another uh, really cool game that, that brought it back was uh, Monster Boy in the Cursed World. Uh, it is this uh, company that took over kind of the uh, uh, monster uh, world slash Wonder Boy uh, game series that Sega used to do for Mega Drive, uh, Genesis, uh, Master System back in the day. They were kind of like, it was like their own uh, side-scrolling Zelda type of game. And uh, this company loved it and they brought it back and uh, they called it uh, Monster Boy. And uh, in the spirit of those uh, Wonder Boy uh, Monster World games it is just great. Uh, it, it's very classic kind of uh, old school 2D platforming uh, adventure game. Uh, the main character, uh, you know, as it's called, Monster Boy. Uh, he turns into different animals. He turns into a pig. He turns into like a, a, an alligator, a knight, some other uh, silliness. He turns into a snake. Uh, it was just really cool. The music was gorgeous. The animation was great. And the artwork was wonderful. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. That comes out uh, this year. Uh, so it was a really treat playing that. I got to play the new Shovel Knight expansion. Uh, that was excellent. That was really wonderful. Uh, which leads to uh, what I thought was the biggest attraction for me was the Nintendo Switch. So I'm a huge Nintendo fan. And Nintendo was there uh, with a giant display uh, to uh, showcase the new uh, Nintendo Switch, which is their new console. Uh, that is hybrid handheld uh, hybrid TV console. It's the console you can take on a go or it's the handheld you can play on a TV however you want to see it. Uh, so that comes out in a month uh, but they had the sneak uh, peek of it to where people got to play it. The line was outrageously long. I uh, wasn't able to get into it. Uh, it was blocked off. They had said that uh, the line waiting to play uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild was like a three hour wait and then it was about an hour, an hour and a half wait to play the other games and this it was Splatoon 2 and Arms and Bomberman and uh, Snipper Clips, which is like this new uh, little mini game. They had all these games uh, that you were able to play, and they're giving away buttons after you got to play each one. I unfortunately did not get in line. Total bummer. But uh, on the other side of the actual game display, they had this giant uh, live demo where they had uh, different little scenario uh, setups that demonstrates the the multiple ways you can play the Switch. So they had a little fake uh, cafe. So like it's almost like a diner setup. Uh, so where it had four switches on a little tabletop mode uh, playing it that way. They also had a fake airplane to where you're sitting in an airplane and uh, you get to see how it plays on the go or like a little mini car and you're playing it. Uh, so the lines for that uh, was really short. I was able to get into that and all of those were demoing um, Mario Kart uh, 8 Deluxe, which is pretty much the same thing as the Wii U uh, Mario Kart. So it wasn't so much a new game, but I got to uh, test out the system. It feels really good. It's great light. It's very comfortable. Uh, but uh, I guess we'll, in a month or so, I'll get a really... A uh, good grip of how, how it is because I'm getting one and uh, maybe we'll do a, a, a full-blown coverage of that when I snag it. But it was really awesome uh, as a Nintendo fan to see all this really cool uh, just full-blown uh, Nintendo jazz. Uh, they had a giant screen with a live demo where they uh, basically pulled people from the crowd to do many competitive uh, rounds of Bomberman and Mario Kart and ARMS and their 1-2 Switch game and uh, I won a hat! So I didn't get to play uh, for the bigger prizes like a Bomberman shirt or Zelda shirts and all this other cool stuff. But I did get a Nintendo Switch hat. Uh, it was hype. It was just a lot of fun. Everyone was just having a blast. Uh, people were getting really excited about it. The feedback for the system from everybody that uh, just looking at it were just really enthused with it. Yeah, so PAX South, uh, it was really cool. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I got to do the three day uh, next year. One day, I, I I did the whole floor in one day and still I didn't get every nook and cranny. So uh, there's definitely a lot to see, a lot to do. And I had a really great time and hopefully they'll bring it back here to San Antonio next year. Uh, that would be great because uh, I don't have to drive that far uh, to go to do all these uh, great things. So PAX South, it was awesome. And speaking of games, I just recently plowed through Resident Evil 7 
And uh, the short of it is, is that I liked it a lot. It was very, very cool. Uh, I've been a fan since the original. It's the reason why I bought an original PlayStation almost 20, over 20 years ago uh, and played all the mainstay titles uh, ever since the beginning. Even part six that people took a dump on. I, I like part six. I had fun with that. It's the weakest one, but I, I still had fun. I don't care. So I had to give part seven a shot and I'm glad I did because it was very cool. So Resident Evil 7, uh, I'll probably do a video on this alone because in the spirit of doing more, yeah, I'm gonna look into that videos. Uh, why not do a video on this one? There's lots of good stuff to gush about and go over all the little uh, delicious details of what I liked about it and how it ties into uh, the other Resident Evil games and um, because fuck it, right? Because we're having so much fun right now, well, why stop? Uh, so Resident Evil 7, boom. And then there's John Wick chapter two. It comes out this week. They don't fuck with the wrong motherfucker, again. And uh, they didn't kill his dog this time. The, they did something to piss him off. They brought him back in. And uh, we're going to find out why later this week. And hopefully it'll be at least half as entertaining as the first movie, which was a total blast. Uh, I love John Wick. And I'm super looking forward to that. Uh, also, on the uh, last podcast with Aaron Iemper, we talked about the movie Raw. Uh, vegetarian, veterinarian, virgin cannibal. Yes, uh, that comes out in early March. Uh, it's a French horror film. Uh, again, vegetarian, veterinarian, virgin, cannibal, gone amok. Got a taste for human flesh. Raw, rated R. Uh, starts Fridays somewhere in March. I'm super looking forward to that. Uh, check out the trailer. It's really, really cool. So there you have it. You got uh, Timmy's Slam Dunkin' Pack South, Death Squared, Double Kick Heroes, Nintendo Switch, Monster Boy, you know, Shovel Knight, John Wick, Resident Evil 7, and Raw. All those things. Yeah, I'm gonna look into that. I hope you enjoyed this uh, mini video edition of Comedia Gogo's podcast, Public Access. Hopefully we're gonna bring uh, more of these often, uh, once a month, twice a month, maybe once a week. I don't know, you tell me. If you liked it, you know, just like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Comedia Gogo, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff. Uh, follow my Instagram at my neighbor Jess, and you can also add me in all the video game uh, IDs, PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, whatever. I'm there, my neighbor Jess. Uh, give me a follow. And um, if you aren't already listening to Public Access, you need to listen to Public Access. It's a great podcast with my friends, Larry and Regan from Comedia Gogo. We're on oneofus.net. And we try to come out with a new episode every week. And speaking of podcasts, uh, we have a new movie edition of Public Access coming out called Have You Seen This Movie? And, and it's going to be a podcast where we get to watch a movie with uh, our friends and guests. And it's going to be a movie that one of us or some of us have not seen before. And then we're going to watch it and discuss it afterwards. And we're hopefully going to cover these movies that have slipped under the radar uh, somehow. Uh, for example, Larry's never seen Alien. I mean, he has when he, you know, like when he was a kid or he doesn't remember it, but he's practically never seen it. And that's like, you know, a horror sci-fi icon. So what, you know, kind of cool discussion would come from somebody finally seeing these movies that they've missed after all these years and then discussing it. So it'll be movies like that or it might be some hidden gems. Who knows? So have you seen this movie? A special public access podcast coming your way very soon. So uh, once again, Comedia Gogo's podcast, public access, one of us.net, Comedia Agogo. I'm Jess, and we'll game you later or something.